Welcome into the Beat Sessions, a place for all things music and where we do the listening for you. I'm your host, Mitchell Weary. It's Friday, April 14th. Hope you've all had an outstanding week. Big album release day today. Lots of great stuff for us to sink our teeth into over the weekend. But we're going to ride the lightning to kick the weekend off. Talk about Metallica and their new record, 72 Seasons. This is the band's 11th studio album and their follow-up to 2016's Hardwired to Self-Destruct. And if you were feeling that seven-year itch, it's because it's about time. Ever since dropping St. Anger back in 2003, it's been this band's MO. I think it's working out relatively well for them. Big old albums. I will say that the one drawback on this record, we'll get into it here in a little bit, a lot of filler. I think that with some production, some editing, you could have had some really tight, solid compositions here. There's a, a handful of them that, that do linger on a little bit too long, but... For a band that's been around for 40 years, these guys, they're kind of at a point where let them do what they want. And what I like about that is that going through the phases that they have been through, thrash metal, moving into that 90s phase that, that not everybody's super crazy about, the hard rock phase. Uh, and then, you know, and, and ending up uh, at this point in their career, combining both sounds and really coming up with some creative some creative ideas to, to develop new compositions and to move those two concepts forward together. Now, I'll admit that there's some some swings and misses. There's you know some tracks that that don't always hit, uh, bringing these two ideas in mind. But the moments when they do, I feel that there's just some brilliant compositions that navigate a lot of fun territory, moving out different time signatures, different tempos. This is a band that you know they're one of the big four for a reason. They're they're still incredible to listen to. The production is absolutely stunning on all of their work. I mean, they're one of my favorite bands to own wax. I mean, if you listen to the production of just about any of their records, pretty much all of their records, it's stunning. And this new album, 72 Seasons, is no exception. Lars Ulrich, he, <laughs> the dude just can't get a break. And maybe rightfully so a little bit. He really was kind of a dick during the whole Napster thing. But I've heard criticism from people saying that his drumming sounds too perfect on this record, which I don't even know what the hell that means. But, you know, you listen to the guy, he really is an outstanding drummer. So crisp so clean and and i it's his style it's the way he plays and i think of a guy like abe cunningham from the deftones who very similar and i've heard that same ridiculous criticism about him as well it's too crisp his drumming sounds too clean so you know if you're into sloppy percussion then you know by all means you can pass on this record but i think lars sounds great on this record and the moments when they are working with some thrash metal he's still got it closing it on 60 like he is still all these guys are still monsters Kirk Hammett is definitely the highlight on this record. And I, I think at this point, I know Dave Mustaine is the original lead guitar player, but I think that Kirk just deserves honorary status after pretty much 40 years. He is a, pretty much a lifelong member of this band and just shines on this record. The technical work that he's working with, when he's just rolling with like a big hard chugging riff, no matter what he's doing on this record, he sounds fantastic. So that's definitely one of the perks about listening to this thing. Robert Trujillo, I think he's a phenomenal bass player. I'm loving his work on this record. This is a band that, you know, the tragedy of Cliff Burton, you know, Jason Newstead moving in and, and filling his shoes. And now Robert, they've, they've managed to be really lucky and to have three incredibly talented cats in that role pretty much throughout the entirety of, of their, uh, of their existence. And so I just, I'm loving the, the thunder that he's bringing to the table on this thing. He sounds great. And, and James, lyrically, this is an interesting record, 72 th seasons. It's uh, the amount of time that it takes for us all to reach adulthood. It's kind of an interesting concept. And you think about him and Lars working on this project since they were about 18. It's, you know, it's, it's so wild to think. I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. But some personal reflection, a little more personal than, let's say, you know, lyrics on an album like Kill Em All. What I will say is that while I admire James you know, digging a little deeper and trying to get a little more personal with the lyrics. There are some moments where he really just comes up kind of short and pretty cheesy. And it really just feels like for the sake of, of rhyming, uh, shadows follow, for example, the opening line hanging by a thread as I play dead, hanging by a thread and my mind is code red. I'm just like, Oh, it's, it's hurting me a little. And then the other one is Lux Eterna, the lead single, this thing, it starts off anticipation and domination. And then it's like, magnification, all generations. I mean, he's just playing with all these suffixes that it, it's it's kind of cheap. 
it's a little cheesy. And again, while I admire where he's trying to go with this, I think that it's uh, it's slightly falling short. But I will say Lux Eterna, that particular track, Kirk is just ripping his guitar apart. I mean, he sounds like a hellhound just tearing through <laughs> through a new dimension of hell on this thing. He's amazing on it. Um, let's get into the track listing on this thing because I'm I'm ready to talk about it. It kicks off with, honestly, one of the coolest songs I think Metallica has done in a long time, if possibly ever. 72 Seasons, the title track. You got this rapid fire bass riff that Robert's throwing down to open this thing up. Lars just riding, riding the hi-hat on this thing to open up. And then the guitar builds in. It's freaking awesome. I absolutely love the way that it just hits with this thrash feel. Um, it backs off. There's all these big chugging riffs that move in and out of this thing. A lot of fun changes in the composition. This is the kind of song that you really just come to expect from Metallica. And it's just a really fun way to kick these thing off. Ballsy too. It's a seven and a half minute opener. It takes balls to kick off an album with like that. And I, and I'm digging it. Shadows follow your second track. You got this big guitar riff, a uh, cool snare work from Lars to, to bring it in percussion forms. And, and the riff that, that fills in on this thing creates a really nice groove. I really like the thrash feel on this as well. Nice and heavy lyrics, as I pointed out, are a bit cheesy on that, but I can forgive the guys uh, on this particular track for that. Screaming Suicide is your third song. Opening riffage is definitely the highlight of, uh, of all the instrumentation that builds this composition. I love the tone of all the guitars on this track. Solo is really solid from Kirk. Uh, big, big fan of that track. One of my favorites, Sleepwalk, My Life Away is your fourth song. It's going to kick off the B side of the first disc. Some funky heavy bass to open. One of the more unique tracks from Robert on this thing, so I'm liking it for that reason. Got this nice tempo that it settles into, good groove. Feeling a, a little bit of Enter Sandman on this one here. And there's there's this stretch right here on this particular part of the record where some of this stuff is starting to feel a tiny bit recycled. It feels kind of like you're playing with this, just this same feel over and over again. And with this style of music and with all, you know, there's a lot that's highlighted technically, so to speak. So you have to dig for that nuance. But I feel that at this point in the record, it kind of it kind of hits a tough spot. I'm loving "You Must Burn." That it, like it's got this big sludgy Metallica feel, and I know that you know not everybody's again fan of that '90s stuff. I just got to get into that real quick because growing up as a '90s kid, I just remember so much animosity about that when "Load" and "Reload" came out. And, and I dig a fair number of those songs on those records. I mean, I'm not like begging for a trilogy. I don't want to listen to Re-Reload. But I mean, Load and Reload are not bad records by any means. So You Must Burn, you're getting more of that kind of like sludgy 90s uh, alternative rock, hard rock Metallica. Great solo work from Kirk here. And I think that that's really what is fun about this track is that that kind of slow sludgy feel allows Kirk to be the highlight on his guitar. Lux Eterna, your big single here is, um, you know, again, cheesy lyrics, but I can forgive James for that. Lots of great guitar work again from Kirk. And this thing is just a banger. It just hits hard from start to finish. Crown of Barbed Wire, your seventh track, begins with this thrash feel, backs off. You get more of kind of a mid-tempo rocker. Uh, solo, again, is pretty sweet on this song, but this particular track, I feel like this is a song that this album could have just gone on without, in my opinion. You know, twelve big, you know, twelve big tracks. Honestly, a lot of music on all of these songs. So that's one that I could have. You know, if we're gonna get into the editing room and start clipping things, that one could go for me. Chasing Light is your eighth track. Um, There's no light kicks this thing off, and then you just get this big riff to open. I love the way this thing kicks in uh, real fast, but then uh, backs off for the verse. It's uh, and it's gonna pick up. And uh, this is a song that's a good example of that fun journey. In, in any metal composition, you know, moving in and out of those, those different tempos, those different timing signatures, fun technical guitar play, enjoyed this. It leads into If Darkness Had a Sun. This is definitely a highlight. Lars, big on the drums to open. Another big, you know, chugging riff, more of that kind of like signature 90s feel. The building on this thing is just spectacular though. And I love the groove that it settles into by the time that all establishes itself. It's it's probably my favorite song on this record. Too Far Gone, your 10th album. Uh, big chugging thrash drive on this thing. Interesting little flair in the chorus. It's almost just completely punk. And dare I even say a little poppy. It was pretty interesting, but it, it really caught my attention because I don't think melodically there's anything else like that on this record. Room of Mirrors is your penultimate track. F another really fun example of, of that journey 
just like a good metal composition that takes a lot of fun twists and turns, kind of keeps you guessing, keeps you on the edge of your seat. Uh, you know, just great rhythm in the guitars. I really like the guitars on the end of this thing. Like the last two or three minutes that Kirk is just working on this song, it's pretty badass. And then In Amarada is your final song, mid-tempo, hard rock and feel. It is, I think this is the biggest song that Metallica has recorded in their career. This thing is like 11 minutes long and it's pretty cool. It's got an interesting little breakdown. Um, kind of slow. It does feel a little monotonous by the end. I wish that they had taken an opportunity with a big track like this to, to explore some, some more territory, have a little more fun with it. But, uh, overall, it's not a bad way to close this thing out. I, I'm really enjoying this record. There's a lot to, there's a lot to really dig and to really appreciate. I gotta say though, honestly, dropping 40 bucks on the wax, this big thing, and, and frankly, when you think about when you think about sound frequencies and what you're working with when it comes to metal music, most metal records, even in like that 50 minute to an hour range, end up being double LPs. And so I feel like you could have trimmed so much fat on this thing, dropped an amazing double LP still, and and had a, a tighter, just more concise listen, a, a listen that has more continuity and that doesn't drag. This thing, there were moments where I felt like it kind of lagged. And for that reason, we're gonna have to give this thing a vinyl pass. But I hope you enjoy checking out this record. I definitely think it's worth giving a go. And if you decide to spend the uh, the money on the wax, um, I will say the production is, is pretty damn good on this thing. And I'd say that element of it, certainly worth it. So hope you find this review helpful. Hope you enjoy this new Metallica record. Like this video and share it. Please tune into the live show on Tuesday nights, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and stay tuned throughout the week for more album reviews. We'll see you next time on The Beat Sessions.